right, there are a lot of ways that you can calculate interest on a loan. We're going to go over three of them right now, and the difference between them is the way that they count days. And the way that they count these days ends up making you pay a different amount of interest. I'll see you inside the video. If you want to dive a little deeper on the Days 360 function and just that component of what we're looking at, I'll link to a video right now that goes through how that works and there's a few different parameters that you can change on it if you get into the details. All right, so if you look down at the bottom of the spreadsheet, we have four tabs. The first three of them are going to be the different day count conventions that we're going over. And then the last one is going to, just going to summarize the difference between them. I'm just going to total up the interest and look at which ones cost more or less. But in order to compare them, let's talk a little bit first about how they're constructed. So these are all just a $200,000 loan, 2% interest, and 30 years. All right, the 30 years happens to be 360 months, and we're going to do all of these three calculations. They look kind of similar. They're just amortization tables on a monthly basis. So there's 360 rows of data down here. The difference in all these really resides in the way the interest is being calculated. So literally the formula that's in this box. So we'll talk about the first one now, and this is the 30 over 360 method. And what this does is every month that interest is calculated, it assumes that the month has 30 days and that the year has 360 days. And this is really the most simple way if you think about it because this is the same as taking the interest rate and just dividing it by 12. So every single month is just 30 over 360. And if you wanna get a copy of these to follow along, visit the link in the description. You can get your own Google Sheet with the exact same numbers. So that's 30 over 360, pretty easy to understand. The next one is actual over 365. It's calculating the interest every month by the actual days in the month divided by 365. All right, so what this means is it's just more accurate matching of the interest expense for every month. So if it's a longer month, you would have more interest, shorter month, you'd have less. But every year is also 365, regardless of whether or not it's a leap year, which is a little bit odd, but that's just the way this works. So the denominator is always 365. And then we're just counting the days in the months. We're doing that here with the day function. We're looking at column B where we just put the day of the month and we repeated it. And so we're extracting that. So this one has 31 days. So it results in 31 divided by 365 times the interest rate, and then times the beginning balance. All right, so this one moves back and forth a little bit. You can see February shorter has less interest, and March is longer again, it has more interest. Let's take a quick look at the date field. To increment this every month, we use something called the EO month function, and all that does is return the last day of the month a specified number of months away from the previous month. So you just say, hey, uh, pull January 2022 and advanced one month and give me the last day of that month. So that's a great function to just do a sequence of full months regardless of the number of days in each month. All right, so that's the actual over 365. So I'd like to take a minute to thank a few of my viewers. YouTube has a feature where you can give a creator what's called a super thank. So it's kind of like a tip. I've gotten a few of those over the past several months. They really help to support my channel, which enables me to create more content like this. Appreciate it. All right, and now we'll move on to the last method. This is actual number of days over 360. So it's a combination of the two concepts because you take the denominator from 360, but you use the numerator concept from actual over 365. So these first two methods, they kind of make sense. The first one's really simple. The second one is more of a reflection of the actual number of days. But then this one, they combine kind of the worst of two worlds and end up charging you a little bit more interest. So let's look at the formula that we're using. If I double click in cell F8, we're using the day function to pull out the number of days for each month. So that's the actual part of the calculation. So for example, 
January has 31 days. So the day function is pulling out 31. And we're going to just place that over 360. We're multiplying the result of that calculation times the interest rate times the beginning balance for the period. And if you want to dig down into the real nitty gritty of the 360 day convention, you can look at the day's 360 function because actually every one of these months when you use that convention doesn't have exactly 30 days. Some will have less, some will have more, but the total for the year will be 360. So it chose to keep this formula a lot more simple, but check out the link to see more about day 360. But now let's look at the end comparison of the three of these rates. So let's go to the total interest worksheet, click on that. And this is the total interest for all three of the methods. They're pretty similar, but as you move through them with the actual over 365, you pay a little bit more interest and the actual over 360, you pay even more. So let's find a better way to visualize this. We'll highlight the three of those values and we'll just click on the explore button. So explore always tries to get the best type of chart for the data set. I think it did a pretty good guess here. We'll shrink this down. So we can get it all on your screen. And you can see that the amount of interest between the three when considering the entire amount is pretty close. But let's kind of zoom in if you will and we're going to customize that chart. We'll change the vertical axis minimum and maximum. So we'll say the minimum is, well, let's look at these numbers. We'll say the minimum 66,000 and the maximum 68,000. Move out of there and you can already see now, let's close this. And you can see now this is a difference between the three methods. So the moral of the story is watch out for the actual over 360 method. It's probably not going to break the bank, but it's going to charge you a little bit more. All right, if you like that video, I'm going to bring you to another spreadsheet video that's going to show you how to create a column of random numbers that automatically adjust for the number of rows that you need. I'll see you in that next video.